right, so now we have the Pro 3.0 backpack and everything that comes inside it. This includes everything you'll need to power the 3.0 as well as charge it and calibrate it. So this backpack, we have three main pockets. First one, we have the unit itself. As you can see, it comes with a nice pocket here, some straps to keep it secure. The unit itself comes with the battery pack inside the unit. So this has a six to eight hour battery life. So you can run it continuously throughout practices all day. In the second pocket here, we have the calibration board. This will be to help make sure you have quality strike zone location data. Comes with this kickstand attached, as well as these legs. Helps any kind of situation where the plate's not level. You can adjust it to make sure that this bubble level on top will tell you if it's in a good calibration or not. In the third pocket, we'll have the tape measure. So you can measure out the Pro 3.0 17 feet from the front edge of home plate. And then also the charging cord. So this is what you plug directly into the Pro 3.0 to charge the battery. You can run it with it plugged in or like our other products, plug it in after the session and it'll charge the battery overnight. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the setup process. Again, just like our other products, you're gonna take your tape measure. It will measure from the front edge of home plate here. So we put the zero on the tape measure there right on the front edge. And then we'll take it all the way to the front of the rubber. So that way we make sure it's lined up directly in line with the, the mound. Another thing that's important here is to make sure you pull the tape measure tight so that you're getting the right distance out in front. Now that we have the tape measure set out, we can measure 17 feet from the front edge of home plate. The front edge of the stereo side, so the side with the two cameras, will go right at 17 feet. And so you try to line it up as, as close as possible. Again, this red arrow will be pointing towards the mound. And then this other edge will be sitting exactly 17 feet uh, from the front edge of home plate. The next step with the Pro 3.0 is to set up the calibration board. So this will sit flush with the front edge of home plate. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a bubble level on top of it that will, that will ensure that everything is lined up correctly. Again, it sits just like this where the front edge of the board is sitting right on the front edge of home plate. And if you can see, we have the, the bubble level here on top, and then these legs on the, on the bottom are adjustable. So you have some screws to make sure if this bubble level is not sitting within the circle, you can adjust it accordingly and make sure that everything is, the board is level facing the mound. So now that everything is set up, we can power the unit on and start the calibration process. So with the 3.0, since the battery pack is already in the unit and, every, and the camera's already in the unit, we can just power it on. There's a power button on the side of the unit near the handle. Just one tap of the button, that light will turn green on the side. And within a few moments, the LEDs on the top of the unit will start to undergo the process of powering on. And you'll see some flashing lights here in a second. And then once the unit become, the LED lights on the top of the unit are solid red, that means the unit is ready to be connected in the app. Now that we see the LED lights are solid red, we're ready to connect to it in the app. You do it the same exact way you would our 2.0 units. You go into the settings tab on your iPad, and in the Wi-Fi settings, you'll see a network appear. It says Rapsodo V3 Pro, and then the last four, the serial number. So you connect to that. There will be a password that is password protected, and that will be available in the quick start guide that is given to you with the unit. Once you're connected in that, you can go into the Diamond app, and once that opens up in the play screen, you'll see an option to refresh, no device connected and refresh button. Or in the devices tab, you can click the refresh button there as well. You'll see a quick spinning wheel there as it gets connected. And there you'll see the Pro 3.0, the battery life, as well as on the play tab, the session types will appear. Just like our 2.0 units in the Diamond app, you can click on the unit itself 
And here you'll be able to see the device name, the Wi-Fi channel, the frequency, and then also different connection and environments, as well as the current firmware and package version. Okay, so now that we are connected to the unit, we can calibrate it. Here you'll be able to select the recalibrate button in the devices tab. And here, this is the important part of the calibration process is that it's lined up directly with the center of the pitching rubber. So this mono screen on the left, you'll want to have a person or something there in the middle of the pitching rubber. There you can line up the unit. And once you're set up at 17 feet here, as you can see, we just want to move it so slightly so it's right in the middle. Again, we'll see the two stereo cameras here, so the ones that are facing the, the plate. They'll be lined up either directly in the middle of the board or just making sure that they're landing on that board so we'll be able to complete the calibration. Once everything is lined up, you can just select this field calibration button right here. You'll see another spinning wheel and it'll undergo some lighting adjustments as it makes the calculation. This will go on for about 10 to 15 seconds as it's gathering some information. You'll see a calibration successful message along with a few numbers there and that'll let you know that your unit is calibrated and ready for use. All right, so now that you're calibrated with the unit, you're ready to start a session. The great thing about the Pro 3.0 calibration process is that it works for both hitting and pitching. So you only have to do it once. And if the unit stays in the same spot, you don't have to recalibrate the unit at all. It saves that previous calibration for the next time you use it, whether you power it off or leave it on for between pitchers or between hitters. So now that you're ready to start a session, you can see with the Pro 3.0, once you're connected, you can see there's three different modes. There is pitching and hitting, so our live on live session types. There's the pitching only modes, the sessions, and then we also have the hitting sessions there as well. So to begin, we're gonna start off with a pitch design session here. So once you select that, you'll see the device configures and arms, and it brings up the play screen with all the regular metrics that you're used to seeing with our 2.0 devices. The button on the top that says recording, that's for the video recording. You able to turn that off by just tapping that. And then the three different screens we have, we have the play screen with all the data, the pitch type and everything. We have the video record screen, which is where you're able to see video recording. And then also the 3D trajectory screen where you're able to see release point and the trajectory of the ball as it's thrown. Okay, so now that we've selected the session type, the unit, you can see the LED lights on top are green. That means that it's armed and ready for a pitch. So whenever you're ready, we can get the session started. When the unit gets triggered, the lights on top turn blue. You'll see in the iPad that you'll see a processing wheel, means it's collecting data. And then within the app, you'll see all the same metrics you're used to seeing, velocity, spin efficiency, total and true spin, as well as spin direction, gyro, and break numbers. Another great thing about Repsoto products is the iPad video capabilities during sessions. So it automatically is recording video to start the session, but for whatever reason you turn that off and want to turn it back on, you can flip back over to the video tab here and click the start record video button in the middle. And there you'll see it, uh, the recording button up there at the top, as well as the iPad video camera, along with all the pitch metrics there that will be displayed alongside the pitch. And that'll play back the video that we just saw. And as we reach peak knee height and into release, it gets slow motion. You can see the replay button populate here at the bottom left. You can use this as a scrub bar so we can pause it at any point in time. So here we want to stop it right at release. You can see right where the release point is, how the ball is coming out, and orientation behind the ball. Other great thing about video capture is that you can kind of set the iPad wherever you want it. For this particular pitch, we were standing right behind the pitcher to get the full flight of the ball and release. All right, as you saw with our 3.0 session here in DimeNap, you see a lot of the same data points as you would with one of our 2.0 units. A couple of the major differences between the 3.0 and the 2.0 is that with the 2.0, you know, we only have the one camera that faces the pitcher. So anything that picks up the ball being thrown, and then once it goes over the unit, a lot of the movement is inferred through spin, spin algorithms and uh, things like that. With the 3.0, we have cameras on both sides, so we're able to see the ball at release, and then as it passes over the unit, the stereo side with the two cameras picks up the ball as it crosses home plate. We're able to see the full trajectory of the ball, giving us a little bit better strike zone 
data as well as full trajectory break of the pitch. Okay, so now with the 3.0, we can begin a hitting session. There's a number of different session types here with 3.0. For example, a T session will lock you into a, the T mode. Soft toss will lock you into a soft toss. With batting practice, you can switch between all three of the different hitting modes, which is T, soft toss, and live slash BP. So we're gonna start one of these sessions here and start with hitting off a T. So we'll be able to change it from soft toss to T. You'll see the device configure, rearm, and once it's green, you're good to go. There you can see the strike zone location of the ball on the tee, as well as the exit velocity, launch angle, and then other parameters that we have. Most notably, the spin direction and total spin of each hit. Okay, so like I said, a bag practice session, you can change the mode the unit triggers off of. Since we just had it in the T session, T mode, we can switch over to soft toss so that we're able to trigger it off of a inbound flip and record data that way. Okay, now one of the really cool features of Pro 3.0 is the live on live session type. So for that, we'll have to enter multiplayer mode. So on your, the left side of the screen, in the play screen, you'll see the multiplayer option. There you can search for the players you want to add to this live on live session. So adding those in now. Once you select those, you can select the session types. You'll see live on live BP or live on live game. So for this, we're gonna do a live on live BP session see a pitcher's list and a hitter's list set up. If a player is strictly a pitcher only or a hitter only in your system, they'll automatically populate in that list. If not, you can drag and drop them into the whichever side of the ball you want them to be in, in that session. Once all the hitters and pitchers are put into that list, you can collect the start button. You'll see the unit configure and arm and the play screen will pop up there with pitching data showing on the left, hitting data showing on the right. Okay, so now that we're done with all of our sessions, we can sync the data to our cloud. The way to do that, just go back into the settings tab and connect back to your regular Wi-Fi source. So once we do that, we enter back into the Diamond app. And you'll see the sync button up in the top left of the play screen. You can click on that and it should begin syncing properly. Uh, another way to view that is to go into the settings tab and click on the upload progress tab. And there, once you sync it, you'll be able to see everything start going, all the different files, video formats, everything like that. Another great thing about our cloud is that it's not just a place to store your data. You're able to visualize all your data through different charts, graphs, summaries, and also be able to view trends through time as you gather data on specific players.